Hey, hi everyone. Thank you for joining in this talk. We are going to be touching upon engineering machine learning system. And the intention for this talk is, or at least for the next one hour, is to have a quick dialogue between what are the gaps that we have when we build machine learning systems and effectively talking about a little bit about machine learning in general, what machine learning is and how we go about and then focusing quickly on the gaps and uh, stuff uh, that needs to go in into building a full scale system. This is, I'll also have a quick demo where I'll show a containerized app. It's not a great app, it's just a, a idea of explaining how containers work and uh, the structure around it, which is much more important than the actual app. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the content. And uh, there, there are a lot of things that this topic covers. This is not a, a crash course or a course or a workshop. This is just one hour probably introduction. So there are a few things which I'm skipping, but I'm trying to stick most to the core. I'll just move on and uh, this is a little bit about me. I'm, a, I'm an architect, been an architect for about close to 10, 9, 10 years now. Uh, I work at Dow Centric currently, which is a management consulting firm. We, we, we take care of niche analytics problems. Uh, you can check out the web page for uh, Dow Centric and uh, see if, if some of the things excite you. There's some very interesting problems that we have solved. Uh, I have been an enterprise architect by profession, been doing this for about uh, five years, have worked across different kind of systems, uh, big data, transactional, mobile and uh, for the last some time, uh, not a lot of time, machine learning. Uh, my current team is totally set, is, is comprises of kick-ass data scientists. We have about 30, 30 plus data scientists, both senior and intermediate experienced people and as I said, we solve some of the niche problems. I'm currently reading two things, Maths for Programmers and Systems Thinking, which is a new addition. It's kind of helping me understand a couple of things which I was looking from a different perspective, to, to be honest. And this is a complementary uh, thinking framework for design thinking. Do so check it out. It's definitely, definitely helpful. Specifically, if you have started your career into the IT industry, it will help you shape your thinking of systems and uh, how, how typically an IT organization or, or systems work. You can connect me on LinkedIn at Akash Verma. Uh, that's my username. The same picture should be there. That's like marketing picture. You see me live. I really don't look like that. I'm much fatter now. That's my Twitter handle and GitHub handle, I believe. Uh, both of them are same. Verma Akash. Two A's in between. And uh, my email address is akash.verma at the rate live dot in. I'm, I'm looking at a second monitor. So pardon me not uh, directly by looking at the camera because I'm shifting kind of focus. Now, now let's jump on, right? Let's jump on to the core of this and uh, the machine learning aspect of it. What is uh, that we are trying to do these days, uh, which is very, and very popular trend, right? For the past few years, a lot of trainings, a lot of excitement, a lot of problems, a lot of investments for some of the folks out there in machine learning. And typically, the, these are some, on the left hand side, you see uh, one of the most uh, popular examples. You have uh, three different types, uh, unsupervised, supervised, and reinforcement. Maybe something new has come up, I do not know. Uh, but these are the three most widely used things. Out of these, supervised uh, learning is the predominant one, uh, kind of regression and classification problems, whether we are doing forecasting, whether we are doing uh, some kind of a prediction, effectively where we know the y variable uh, in, the, in the model, right? Uh, that's, that's the supervised learning kind of uh, scenario. Classification is more like uh, image classification, text stuff, customer attention and things like that. So regression classification need not touch upon it a little bit, more, a lot. Uh, I think that's not the core agenda. Coming back to my slides, uh, the, the unsupervised learning is where we do clustering, kind of recommender system, customer segmentation, where we do not have a lot of uh, predictions to make. Uh, also there's lack of, let's say, l training data or labeled data. Uh, clustering and PCA uh, dimensionality reductions are very very popular and uh, PCA being a very popular technique uh, that's one of the things which fall under falls under dimensionality reduction now that's RL uh, is, is as I have understood it's a penalty and uh, recommendation based system penalty and uh, loss optimization kind of system uh, moving on to the right hand side of the diagram what we have is typically the most popular library and the cheat sheet for it where we solve all of these uh, four different problems, uh, which is regression, classification, clustering, and dimensionality reduction, uh, and and the way to do it, right? This is this is very standard, and yes, a lot of feature engineering goes on it. Uh, I'm not in any way undermining the role of 
the effort that goes in here but that's that's pretty much what modeling is a lot of about you you understand the problem you do feature engineering you solve uh, let's say uh, certain use cases you you come up to a reasonably right uh, forecast accuracy or, or an accuracy whatever is the problem domain we are talking a cheat sheet is not visible i think this is the cheat sheet i'm referring to this uh, sk learn diagram uh, is my screen visible Patik, is it visible to you guys uh, yeah it is visible yeah, okay. maybe you can zoom in a little bit if you have to talk about sure uh, sure, yeah. sure i'll i'll probably yeah. keep that man all right so that's the Fine. cheat sheet i i think if you just search for sk learn cheat sheet you will find it very straight up uh, on google uh, moving on now now the goal or the key talk is where we start this right and uh, when we when we develop a machine learning model and this is just a cartoon data scientists you all are data scientists right uh, and what you do is you you build a model right you'll you'll create a custom designed uh, model also the environment in which you operate is very very isolated as far as i have uh, understood and observed the state of things it's kind of a sandbox where jupyter notebooks is the de facto thing and uh, that's that's where people work they you you'll you'll typically have a notebook you'll look at the problem you'll pull a data file and you'll create a model right and a lot of these times it, people do not even use uh, like visual studio codes notebook is where uh, most of the cool stuff happens now moving on this is a little more let's say realistic view of things uh, as to what are goes on apart from model creation because uh, you you typically have to define a problem you need to do data ingestion you need to do data preparation segmentation where i think the train test split is something everybody is very familiar with uh, then we do model trainings then there's the the candidate eval model evaluation and this is kind of a loop right uh, you you do this iteratively you take your test data you train a model and then you validation set take your validation set you you evaluate the model and uh, finally on a validation set you would kind of uh, go for a candidate model evaluation once you have it now this kind of is iterative and steps 1 to 3 6 um, are kind of something which uh, people mostly understand uh, to emphasize on something which is the first uh, two like problem definition and data ingestion there could be a probably a workshop dedicated itself to it because that's also a disjoint piece apart from modeling but the focus is more towards the seven and eight piece of it so that's that's what things uh, realistically happen right uh, and we are going to be talking about a little more than that and this this model this this prepare experiment and deploy is is more closer or is the closest analogy or a diagram that i can find on internet or probably even draw myself now there's a lot of data preparation which happens you do all sorts of features engineering feature scaling uh, data cleaning up data imputation uh, labeling of data and and tons of thing happen there right also the where you store the data how you get the data all of that falls under the preparatory exercises right under the experiment phase uh, what we do is we have jupyter notebooks and some of the people use visual studio code uh, this is also becoming very popular now along with pycharm which is also another popular tool and then you build your model and you train and test and you again iterate over it and then finally you have a candidate model which is register and manage your model and then you move on to deploying it and here is when we can see certain things keywords start popping up like web services monitoring dependencies etc this is not uh, the kind of game which uh, data scientists are used to right they are usually worried about the features sets pickle files etc they are not worried on dependencies uh, web services and monitoring and how and containers etc etc but that's this represents a more uh, kind of an end to end view of things and uh, which is uh, where we need to ponder a little bit and we need to understand what are the things we need to see and address after we do modeling so after uh, we have modeled a business problem or after we have uh, let's say created a model what are the things we are doing right we need to understand the integration how how is my system or this model integrated with other system components how how are we doing the data ingestion layer how are we pulling the data uh, are multiple technologies right they also come into play my core system could be written in java or sql and then we need to think about how to integrate that then comes the deployment which is yes you say as to i am a data scientist why should i worry about you the answer super simple is a data scientist is is probably a person 
who who needs to understand the aspects of of other team members there are other team members and he needs to be aware of what his or her team does and uh, they effectively also sometimes need to take an active part in the dis- in these discussions right because this is not an isolated exercise you are not doing this in an isolated way uh, then we go on to deployment where we touch upon traditional versus modern approaches cloud versus on prem kind of a thing a uh, lot of you would typically talk to your architects infra team but again something that uh, machine learning systems also uh, need to worry about and cannot escape scalability right uh, what is that i mean as my model uh, it can always do a model dot predict uh, but can it do model dot predict probably for 1000 users the pickle file can it can it be available in memory all the time can it serve concurrent users because uh, unless and until a model is used uh, it's pretty much uh, of not a lot of use right it's not a lot of use for people and then we jump on to the monitoring aspect of it as to what do we do what wh- what are the things we can do to see the system and how the, how the systems behave and assess the model and etc etc uh, this talk kind of builds upon some concepts a uh, very popular buzzword in the industry uh, devops which wherein we let's say uh, the entire life cycle of software development right the automation pieces of software development from coding planning monitoring operating releasing building is is kind of an infinite loop this all kind of happens in a loop where things are all connected and they are they are not sequential we need to as as we see in these diagrams things are not sequential they are kind of very very closely connected and there's a loop that goes on in uh, when we work and talk with these systems and uh, hence the a more uh, realistic picture the circular way of seeing things where you have model training you deploy it you scale it along with apis you manage it and you connect to it and then you keep on repeating it so effectively what we need to have is certain set of practices to shorten the life cycle uh, by probably automation right that's that's the key mantra here that's the key talk uh, of of all of this and this is when a lot of buzzword starts popping popping up and the most popular right now is uh, machine learning op- ops right which is ml ops while uh, the the and it, it's a derivative of machine learning plus probably devops i think and that's my opinion there's a very excellent book uh, from which i've taken this diagram it's called ml ops operationalizing data science it's a very short and crisp read uh, very good in the summary of it uh, pretty pretty interesting uh, book book if you see and uh, what what we do in ml ops is uh, you typically build manage deploy and integrate so build manage deploy and integrate and monitor and that's the whole life cycle of it right in build what do we do we do feature engineering model building and testing in manage we do auditing version control uh, of of lot of things right we are used to seeing uh, version control for source code but here we need to worry about model version control for data for the model files because effectively there are multiple models that come out and the best one needs to be picked right see potential model e reuse scenarios can the same model be you reused in a in a probably different landscape Uh, or or if scenarios are kind of similar in a like to like state uh, deploy and integrate model export and deployment and uh, business app development where you typically use and start uh, using the model this is these are the parts where we start doing more ops than uh, ml pieces of it right and then you do in monitor where you typically measure uh, it across certain matrices right these matrices could be anything they could uh, very easily range from uh, just simple infrastructure monitor or they could be your model actual versus prediction right uh, because your system is predicting and let's say it's a defect prediction system so you're predicting defects and also at the same time you have actual defects so you could have a performance measure there and then you have business matrices which are probably uh, not targeted for this audience so i'll, I'll take a pause here uh, before uh, diving into the let's say next segment and uh, let's let's do a quick interaction and see uh, are there any questions so far we have uh, been uh, let's say ranting about for the past 15 minutes and we have touched upon slowly move from machine learning to talk uh, touch upon devops and also do kind of uh, finally landed on ml ops are there any questions anybody want to jump in unmute themselves or probably use chat i'll i'll, I'll take a pause here
Alright, I do not see anything, which is good and bad both. Okay, how is Jaskirat Kaur? She's asking, how is MLOps effective than ML? A pretty good question, right? So ML machine learning in itself, as I as we saw initially, uh, machine learning is the probably the art and the science of doing data science, of making machine learning models, of solving these problems, right? The ops pieces are where you once you have created your model, what do you do with it? Uh, which is what the remainder of the talk with it? How do we productionize it? How do we operationalize it? And by operationalization, I simply mean how do we make sure the model is used by somebody, right? This whole uh, circle where uh, the, the ML pieces would probably be the, this part. But then this whole circle needs to still happen, right? Because models themselves are just files and uh, they are of no use to anyone because there's a world outside it, right? Apart from being a data scientist, you need to give your model to a consumer. So that's where MLOps comes in. I don't think it's an effective question. Uh, probably, uh, yeah, it does certain preach in best practices around how you could do ML also, but it's more like both are required. And Sankesh is asking, is it like DevOps? Uh, very much, uh, and uh, but but probably evolved. There are pieces in DevOps which uh, there are problems that DevOps solves which simply are not present here and. Uh, there are problems in MLOps which specifically MLOps address which DevOps hasn't uh, seen or seen through but at a very large umbrella it is like DevOps that uh, would be true. So the dev part uh, here is replaced by the ML word uh, which is the modeling and uh, the other part uh, would be in the operations which is the rest of the stuff that I have been talking about. 